everyone. I hope to take a few moments of your time um, to enjoy hearing wonderful things about wonderful people. Uh, my name is Wendy Mariner, and I have the privilege of chairing the session of Civil Rights and Social Justice. And on behalf of the section, I welcome you all to the reception honoring the recipient of the 2020 Father Dryden Award. Father Dryden Award it recognizes a person who sustained an extraordinary commitment has advanced the section's mission louder, louder, louder. All right. I find it easier if I just wander around the room with a microphone. Um, the father, the uh, Father Dryden Award recognizes a person who has sustained an extraordinary commitment and it has advanced the mission of the section of civil rights and social justice of providing leadership to the profession in protecting civil rights, human rights, and social justice. It's named after Father Drynan. Father Drynan was a founding member of the section and its chair in 1990 to 1991 a delegate to the ABA House of Delegates. He was, of course, a Roman Catholic Jesuit priest and dean of Boston College for uh, 15 years. He served as a U.S. congressman from Massachusetts, my home state, <laughs> and, um, well, for almost 10 years, beginning in, uh, I'm sorry, he went for almost 15 years, he served as a congressman for about 10 years, beginning in 1971, until Pope John Paul II requested that all priests withdraw from elected office, perhaps all meddlesome priests. Um, he, he then taught at Georgetown Law Center until his death in 2007, emphasizing international human rights. He was revered throughout the country as a teacher, scholar, and advocate, I'd say, for the section's mission. Not, I don't think you could have a better summary of your life. Before introducing the award recipient, I want to recognize uh, past Father Drine and award recipients who are with us tonight and ask them to identify themselves by either standing if, or raising their hand. And please hold your applause if if you have any for them, um, <laughs> until after I mention them all. Mark Agrest, Mark Greco, Steve Hanlon, Miles Link, Estelle Rogers, Steve Ramil. We salute those who have carried on talking about this. I'm, of course, proud to have with me an extraordinary uh, people who are members of the council and officers of the section of international, uh, international of civil rights and social justice and uh, committee members and section members who are with us tonight. I want to welcome the, um, the members of the board who um, are with us also, especially Howard Wall, our, our board of governors liaison. Uh, Lynn Barr, David Clark, James Durant, Russell Frisbee, Rue Goodenough, Michael, I'm sorry, I can't read, Michael Biowit, Michelle Wong Krause, Jim Holmes, Miles Link, Michaela Posner, Beverly Quayle, and Steve Ramil, and of course, ABA Secretary Mary Smith. Um, I also want to welcome the many members of the House of Delegates who are here with us. Uh, we, I can't name them all, but we are so very glad that you are here and we welcome your presence and especially your support. I want to extend a special welcome to our former ABA presidents who are here with us, immediate past president Bob Carlson, past president... <laughs> Past President Linda Klein, <laughs> Hillary Bass, <laughs> and Laurel Bellows, although I didn't see her yet. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, 
And finally, a very special welcome to our ABA. Karen Mathis. Karen Mathis. Oh, Karen Mathis. Karen Mathis. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Thank you for your leadership this year. Um, it's, I know, been a great six months and the best is yet to come. You know, Arthur Dryden was one of the people in the very beginning years of my involvement in the ABA back in the early 80s who welcomed me in. As a member of this section, I can tell you that he is somebody who always walked across the room when he saw you walk into a room. And I had the privilege of chairing the ABA and Lawyers Division the same year that he chaired the, the section of Individual Rights and Responsibilities, now Civil Rights and Social Justice. Um, so I know Dryden. And I also know Jesuits, because I had three boys who went to Jesuit school. So another, <laughs> another big uh, 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 way to learn. What I also know is that he wouldn't want us to be spending time talking about him. He'd want us to be talking about the extraordinary honoree we have tonight. And it's been through many years in the association that I've had the privilege of working with Rob. I kind of call him one of my quiet confidence. confidence. He's always there. He answers calls. He answers emails. And he gives you the best of what he's got. He gives you thoughtful advice. He gives you guidance. And he gives you and shares his wisdom. And sometimes it's not always over the phone or it's not always by email. I had the pleasure of joining this wonderful section when you went on the Montgomery, Birmingham, Selma trip. I had to leave a little bit early, as Will knows, and didn't make it quite to Selma. But it was on those bus rides and those days of walking in that spiritual place that Rob and I had a chance to spend time together again. It was so meaningful to see what we saw, to feel what we saw together. So, with all the extraordinary honorees that have become before him, I can't think of a better person to add to the list. And thank you, Rob, for all those calls and those walks, and for always being there for so many people in leadership in the ABA. We really value you and appreciate you, and we're delighted to be with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, and I will be very brief, but Rob, I hope that you understand that all of the folks who were here tonight who needed to be introduced because they are important to the American Bar Association are here to honor you. They are here because of the service you have given in so many ways to our profession, to the causes of social justice, human rights, civil rights, and to a, an extraordinary career. You should feel, I hope, deeply honored simply by the presence in this room of these wonderful people. We honor you, we um, value all of your contributions, and we all join together tonight to say congratulations. very much. So, on behalf of the Section of Civil Rights and Social Justice, it is my honor and privilege to present the 2020 Father Dynan Award to Robert and Weiner. So you, can't get <laughs> you will have to listen to things that uh, you will, I think, bring you to tears. Um, and this is the Twitter version, mind you. 
The real version is about 45 minutes. So I had to make a few notes in order to keep on track. Rob Weiner has devoted his career to advancing civil rights and social justice through the rule of law. When he joined the ABA section of civil rights and social justice in 1980, and I know it wasn't called that then, but I'm not letting the new name go. Um, when he joined it, he was already an astute advocate for the rule of law to protect constitutional rights and human rights. I mean, after all, he came out of Texas. Right? He was born in San Antonio to a World War II veteran father and a war bride mother from Manchester, England. And he had a British accent when he started school. That did not last long in San Antonio. <laughs> but he was an obvious intellect. He went to Princeton, where I gather he had a classmate that ultimately became our section director's stepfather, our Shapiro's stepfather. We are, it's very incestuous here. Um, <laughs> but he did. Even though he went to Princeton, he left his heart in San Antonio because after he graduated from Yale Law School, um, he returned and married Cheryl, whom he had met in San Antonio. They married just after Rob graduated from Yale Law School. And on a Memorial Day weekend, I gather, and on a Memorial Day Monday, uh, left for New York City. And a day or two later, Rob started his clerkship in Federal Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, right, with Judge Henry Friendly, who became his legal North Star. You can see Judge Friendly's insistence on fairness in everything that Rob does. And then, Rob clerked for Justice Thurgood Marshall. How jealous are you? Yeah. <laughs> really. Um, <laughs> and, Apparently, Rob would happily stay at the courthouse all evening listening to Justice Marshall's stories. While, by the way, Cheryl was home pregnant and alone. <laughs> but he listened, and he listened because he loves the law. He loves the stories. He loves finding creative solutions to problems. He believes in principle. He believes everyone deserves a lawyer, even if the lawyer disagrees with the client. These are increasingly rare qualities today, and they deserve praise and emulation. Rob joined the leadership of Civil Rights and Social Justice section and became chair in the 2017-2018 bar year. He initiated the section's wildly popular and informative rapid response project. This is a series ongoing of webinars uh, in addition to our regular substantive programs in person and webinars that bring expert to get experts together very quickly, within days, for immediate response and within weeks for longer term legal issues. Uh, and since, not, since 2007, we've had 54, since 2017, we've had 54 of these with over 10,000 registrants and viewers. viewers. And they, they offer this clear and insightful analysis of a legal issue from different perspectives and how they might affect the rule of law. Um, this has been especially valuable, I think, in this era of confusing social media and misinformation where a lawyer from any sort of practice can get a handle on an issue of civil rights that they might be interested in but not be familiar with. Rob's leadership has been really indispensable in gaining <clears throat> adoption by the House of Delegates of many resolutions that CRSJ has sponsored. I won't name them all for time, um, <clears throat> but he has helped, he has been instrumental in the great success of our Thurgood Marshall Award Dinner in 2018, honoring Eric Holder, and it might not have been as great without Rob's yeoman effort. But you would never know that, because Rob is the last <clears throat> one to take credit. As Judy said, quiet help. He's a great mentor for anyone who wants to get things done. He takes time to bring young lawyers along. Um, I said it before, and I'll say it again. Rob always says yes. He says yes to doing even the most difficult and menial tasks. 
And I, I really don't know where he finds the time or energy, because he does it all with such modesty and a wry sense of humor. He's kept CRSJ focused on preserving the rule of law. His chair columns on the rule of law, which are now posted on our website, I'm happy to say, they are required reading. They really are. Um, he successfully encouraged the section to support the court watching chair, uh, court watching project, co led by Steve Hamlin, and uh, which observes and reports on violations of due process in misdemeanor courts. This has been an important um, source of information to reveal the workings and the processes and proceedings of city and state lower courts where defendants may not realize that they need or are entitled to a lawyer or are being fined or charged fees that they cannot afford to pay. Rob remains committed to these issues because since, 19, since 2017, he's chaired the first call, the ADA Presidential Task Force on Building Public Trust in the American Justice System. And now known as the ADA Working Group on Building Public Trust in the American Justice System. He spearheaded the development of the ADA's 10 guidelines on court fines and fees published in August 2018. The work continues with a new report on privatization in the criminal system, criminal justice system. And he's worked to ensure consideration of civil and human rights in multiple capacities. He continues to bring section valuable knowledge and experience from his many leadership positions within the ADA, including serving as a member of the ADA Board of Directors. He served on the ADA Standing Committee on the Federal Judiciary, the Commission on Women in the Profession, and he's been a state delegate from the District of Columbia to the ADA House of Delegates since 2014, and also Vice Chair of its Standing Committee on Credentials and Admissions, and many other committees. Um, he continues to bring the issues, pursuing criminal justice issues of particular concern to the section here. And in all these ways, he's been a voice for the section's mission. His multidimensional perspectives on policies, programs, and collaboration with other entities have benefited this section enormously. He offers views from many different vantage points from his private law practice at Arnold and Porter, um, and from state bars with his service as president of, as the, of the District of Columbia Bar, and of course his government service, first as you, as, not first, second, as Associate Deputy Attorney General in the United States Department of Justice, where he was charged with defending, for, at the beginning, the Affordable Care Act, not an easy task, and is, before that, as senior counsel in the office of White House counsel during President Clinton's second term, he was responsible for everything else, meaning everything except impeachment. That's a wide-ranging portfolio. Especially important are his pro bono activities. He chaired the D.C. Circuit's Judicial Conference Committee on pro bono and served on the advisory committees of the D.C. Circuit. He's chaired the ADA Standing Committee on Pro Bono and Public Service, and currently serves as a member of the ADA Standing Committee on Legal Aid and Indigent Defendants. In return, he's instilled the section's principles and values in these endeavors. He's truly an ambassador for the section, as well as the ADA. In fact, Rob's office at Arnold and Porter is really festooned with awards for his pro bono work, about 30 pro bono matters since only 2012. So you might wonder why Arnold and Porter pays him. So do Yeah. <laughs> well, they do because he's worth it. He's creative. He can find ways to right wrongs that no one else can think of. In, in her book of essays, No Time to Spare, Ursula Le Guin describes three types of reactions to poverty, which I think can apply to people's reactions to wrongs done to other people. Some deny that any wrong exists. Others recognize the wrong, but throw up their hands and say, well, what can we do? But some people help. 
Rob helps. He helps right wrongs. But there are other sides to Rob. Many of you may know that Rob is a foodie. If you want recommendations in any city, in any country, just ask Rob. I do. <laughs> Apparently, he may have gotten his start when his daughter Courtney was about seven years old and became a vegetarian. Now, I get it. I live in Cambridge, where everybody's a vegetarian for 15 minutes. So, to entice Courtney to eat something besides Annie's macaroni and cheese, Rob learned to cook Indian cuisine. I had no such ambition. I ordered Thai takeout, which my daughter still thinks of as my best home cooking. So Rob is now an aficionado, an aficionado of reality TV food competitions, like Master Chef. Well, think of it, he's a litigator, so he has to love competition. And at the same time, he's funny and warm-hearted. Except when Cheryl was staying at home with the children, and he would call and describe the fabulous meals he was having at the Cirque or someplace like that, rubbing it in. <laughs> I'm especially pleased that Rob's wife Cheryl is here, together with her father, Jim Tobin, and Kay Lennon, Cheryl's brother, Mark Tobin, and her sister-in-law, Elizabeth Cohen. Rob's mother would be here, but isn't able to travel, and Rob and Cheryl's children, Courtney and Lindsay, are not here either, but would, are sorry not to be here, but they are taking care of Rob and Cheryl's very young grandchildren, Jack and John. You notice they're, they belong to Rob and Cheryl, not to Lindsay and Courtney. So now, the award. Rob, would you please join me at the podium? <laughs> First, because it's Valentine's Day. And because you are a foodie. Um, and because you, have, you are loyal to Texas. I want to present you with a local delicacy. Oh. Texas pralines. <laughs> Really nice. <laughs> <laughs> and second, on behalf of the entire section council, we are very proud to call you our own. Um, you bring intellectual curiosity, you bring rigor, you bring fairness to our dogged pursuit of justice. In all your endeavors, I think you emulate Father Drynan's dedicated and principled advocacy for human rights with wisdom, open-mindedness, and generosity of spirit. All in service to the section, its goals, its ideals, and its mission. Therefore, in recognition of, this, of distinguished service to the section, In recognition of distinguished service to the section and the profession in advancing and civil rights and human rights for all, it is with great respect and admiration that the section of civil rights and social justice presents the Robert F. Dryman Distinguished Service Award to Robert N. Dwyer this 14th day of February. 20th.